Hi, I'm Kristen Oaks White. And I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for the special edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Well, right now we're coming to you from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We are here following Louisiana Farm Bureau leaders, farmers, and ranchers from across the state as they meet with Louisiana's congressional delegation. It's spring break in most places, but here in D.C., it's a really interesting time with a new administration and a new farm bill on the horizon. The folks from Louisiana Louisiana got quite a surprise up here as a few inches of snow greeted most on the day they arrived. The snowbound streets stopped bus travel and traffic in some places, but did not stop these scheduled Capitol Hill visits. Labor concerns, tax issues, regulations, and of course the Farm Bill were all topics covered during the two-day event. Prior to the Hill visits, experts from the American Farm Bureau Federation briefed the Louisiana group with some insight on the current issues. In fact, we're shooting the show right now from the American Farm Bureau Federation headquarters. And we will hear from some of those AFBF staff a little bit later on in the show. Also a little later in the show, we'll catch up with Carl Wiggers, who followed one farm family from their home to meet their congressional representative here in D.C. and all of the issues they had to talk about. Well, this nation's capital, along with one state, numerous cities, universities, and a street in almost every city in the country is named after one man, the first president, General George Washington. With so much named after him and so many accomplishments, it's not very well known what he liked to do best. Twyla's Neil Malasson traveled just outside of D.C. to George Washington's home, a little farm called Mount Vernon. Statesman, General, President, George Washington is revered in American history as the father of our nation through the many roles he played there at the beginning. Among other things, there is a city, state, and even a prominent monument dedicated to him. But what do we know about Washington as a person? That he chopped down a cherry tree? No, he didn't. That he threw a silver dollar across the Potomac? No, that didn't happen either. What about surviving the winter at Valley Forge? Yeah, that's true. Well, at least we got something right from school. But here at his home in Mount Vernon, you'd have to wonder about Washington the man as especially as you look out over all the farmland he had, about 3,200 acres under crop, according to our expert here, Sam Murphy. If he rode up right now and you said, General, describe yourself in one word, he's going to say farmer. Washington's love of agriculture never really left him. In fact, as president, he continued to come up with innovations to help American agriculture and his own farm back at home. In fact, this grist mill behind me is his very own innovation, a brand new way of separating the wheat from the chaff. He'll divide the four working farms into seven fields. Two fields in wheat, his new cash crop. A field in corn intercropped with potatoes, carrots, there are a lot of mouths to feed here at Mount Vernon. There'll be fields in cereal grains, rye, oats, barley, fields in green manures. These are plants like clover, cowpeas, buckwheat, turnips, things that you grow, plow back into the soil, the soil gets healthier. You'll know them today as nitrogen fixers. And last but not least, Washington has anywhere from 600 to 1,000 head of cattle, of, of what he calls white cattle, we call them sheep, that put into pasture grass fields will graze the pasture grass, pull the grass up by the roots, and leave behind a manure that doesn't need composting. Beyond the crops grown here at Mount Vernon and the innovations that made life easier like this grist mill, Washington was thinking beyond the bounds of his own farm. The vertical integration and global trade that modern agriculture depends on was pioneered here, including some commodities we raise in Louisiana today. Washington shipping flour to Portugal. The Portuguese are sending him Lisbon salt He's taking the salt and salt packing the million and a half fish he's pulling out of the Potomac every year, which are headed, gutted, put into barrels, salt packed to be shipped down to the sugarcane plantations in the West Indies. Washington's vision included even more though. At his farm, he pioneered 60 different crop varieties with the idea that his large farm could take on the risks that smaller farmers further west could not. Experiments in varieties, soil types, and yield led to the creation of modern agriculture science that ultimately developed the USDA almost 100 years later. It's a legacy that's still going on today, and these ninth graders from Minnesota are getting a lesson in their government class firsthand. So we look at part of the innovation of Washington. We looked at how he changed soil. We looked at the innovation of the gristmill. We looked at slavery and 
although it was slavery, but they were skilled slaves rather than unskilled. We looked at that difference. And sure, they're learning about the scholar, the general, and the president. But here at Mount Vernon, they're getting to see where all the food and fiber they have and enjoy today were first planted from the farmer, George Washington. For This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, I'm Neil Malasson. Now, Neil just visited the farm itself, but there is a lot more to Mount Vernon, including Washington's Manor House, a slave monument, and a museum. The whole site is definitely worth a trip down there to follow in the footsteps of our nation's first president and such a huge contributor to modern agriculture. For more information on Mount Vernon or to plan a trip there, you can log on to our website at twilatv.org.